welcome back guys unfortunately the system got uh, crashed uh, um, during last session so it was ended abruptly now i'm going to start from the same point you can see the same queries still there i copied the same uh, queries and i saved it fortunately i got the queries back so let's start from the point where we stopped in last session we stopped when we were discussing about distinct keyword how to add distinct keyword when you are having the row number or rank or then rank and so on so it works in in a different way if, if i execute this you can see it is 1 3 4 6 is not proper i mean uh, it is just because of how the sequence uh, how the sequence of a sql i mean select statement execution logical execution so and if you see this dense rank or rank this looks fine why because it filters all the distinct data first and then it will rank so it is coming one and the next one will be 3192 and so on so first 3191 records are having the same product name or whatever the partition or the other one the order by up given for the rank function it will be executed in the and in the same way dense rank let's see the dense rank even this is fine uh, but you can see it is not filtering properly why because it's still there uh, rank 333 yeah it is filtering fine it is distinct now it is, it is applying the distinct keyword perfectly and end time so the problem here is first it will execute the from class and then the where class and then group by and then having and then it will come to um, select part and then finally order by part so just because of this logical execution it may not give you the expected result so how to get the distinct not only the distinct keyword which gives you the distinct data right there is one more way uh, that is group by I don't know how many of you guys remember group by is equal to distinct or distinct combination of non aggregating columns plus aggregated columns so first it will take the distinct of the keywords let me show you a simple example uh, I know you people are having a blank face the, uh, actually we discussed about this long back when we were discussing about um, SQL Server basics so select start from dim product I'll call it as a inner join Part internet sales call it as B on A dot product key is equal to B dot product key and I'm gonna give warning uh, let's say color comma English product name comma sum of sales so uh, I'll, I'll just this one as sales it's not sales it's sales amount so that's why it's throwing error so let me highlight this query and see this is throwing error why because this is the aggregating column and I'm not having color and sync as part of my group by so let me add that group by to group by the color and the English product name to execute this first it will take the distinct of these two combinations that means the one which I specified in the group by that is color and English product name and then it will apply the aggregate function here in our case it is a sum it will provide you the sum of each and every combination distinct combination that is available in the database so this distinct part so in the same way you can apply the group by for this stuff all the four queries which we use distinct instead of distinct let's try with the group by what it will do is first it will apply the group by function and uh, sorry group by and then uh, apply the aggregate function whatever we specify here and then it will provide the rank let me show you the same so sales amount as sales fine instead of this I have to give sum of sales amount as sales and this one will be in my group by statement So if I execute this one now, oops, 
one second sales amount it is having some problem let me check that so actually the problem was I have given the sum of sales amount and so the same sum of sales amount should be in this order by and the same sum of sales amount here in the group by. So if I execute this one now first it will calculate the aggregate function see uh, racking socks L and this is the sales amount and this is the row number 1 and in the same way it will take the aggregate value the sum of the value and then it is giving you the row number. As you can see here, it is giving the row number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. So now let's apply the same stuff, that is the group by stuff for uh, the rank function. How it shows and how it works. Let's see, I have to give sum of sales amount. This is the first thing I have to do. And also order by, it should be sum of sales amount. So if I execute this. You can see the ranking, it is aggregated and there is no duplicate data. The rank is perfect, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. So this is how you can aggregate the data and then provide the rank or row number or if you want to go for the same uh, that is uh, dense rank, you can even apply the same uh, formula for getting the dense rank. Let me show you. I have to give sum of sales amount. Now let's see. It is giving you the dance rank based on the aggregated data. So the data is aggregated first and then it is providing you the dense rank. This is how if you want to get the aggregated data and then apply the dense rank. So and then apply the rank or and then apply the row number. So whatever you want to apply after getting the aggregated stuff then you have to go for group by statement and this is the procedure for uh, applying the group by statement. And if you see here, I'm getting 130 rows, right? 130 rows, you can see it here in the bottom. I'm getting 130 rows, 130 distinct products data. So let me apply the same for entire. Entire, you know very well what it will do. It will split, it will slice the result set into the number of times which we provide as integer for the entire function. I have given 100, so it will take uh, first 30, it will take 2, 2. You can see 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 25, 25, 29, 29, 30, 30, 31. And from 31, you can see it has become 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. So this is how the entire function works, and this is how you can add group by with entire function. So this is about uh, different uh, ranking functions and applying group by and ranking functions together in a SQL query. And here don't ask me how to apply the group by when I have a partition. You don't need to ask that here. Why? Because it is, it's the same routine stuff. What will happen is you will get a partition here for every query that for ranking and so on. If you apply one. Uh, without group by the same will be applied with group by or the same will be applied with different properties of SQL Server state uh, select statements okay and you all guys uh, remember the sales function I think okay uh, sorry some function let let's go back to the let's revisit the sum function once okay I'm not going for this uh, group by statement sorry I have to go for group by statement instead of uh, n time I'm using sum function, sum of, and on over, I'm not giving anything. Okay, so I'm taking a sum function, sum of over. I've not specified anything else here. Um, okay, so this looks like uh, the same query right whatever the query you used for ranking uh, different ranking functions now instead of ranking functions we are going for sum function the sum function you know very well this is how the sum function works sum of a column it will give you sum of the data now let's see how to get the total sales okay uh, I'll name it as total sales and once I execute this query you will come to know the difference 
column is invalid in the select where I'm using that where is invalid okay um, let me remove this for now okay guys let me rewrite the query okay uh, let me take a deep breath first. select start from English pro oh, sorry dim product I'll call it as a inner join um, I'll call pack internet sales b on a dot product key is equal to b dot product key this will give you all the records from both the tables I'm taking English product name from here as products and I'm taking sales amount as sales up to here it is fine if I execute this it will give you uh, something like product wise sales amount and I'm taking order by um, I'll take English product name it will it will result the data it will retrieve the result like uh, uh, in product wise sales in the ascending order based on the English product name now we can use the sales amount uh, sorry sum function in a different way let me show you how to use the sum function in a different way normally how what what you do you will have a sum function and some column here instead of that uh, I'm taking the same over something I'm specifying something sales of uh, sum of sales amount over I've not specified anything let's see how this guy executes this guy is giving you some data and what is the data if you observe it clearly this is the total sales amount that is present if I add all these data I've taken all these 60,000 some records if I add all these guys then it will return the uh, value 2935 so this is how you can get the total sales as a separate column in the result set generally if you use sum of sales amount what you have to do you have to add a group by statement but I'm giving the uh, keyword here I'm using the keyword over so this means it is giving you it is uh, the, uh, you are asking the server to provide the sales amount the total sales amount that is present in the result set or in the table treat it as one partition and get the sales amount of uh, all the records that are present so this is one extra feature that is available with the sum function which many are not aware of so you can make use of this to get the sales of uh, any particular sorry sum of any particular column without using group by now I'm copying the same query I'm calling it as some total sales I'm going to the next query here I'm taking sum of sales amount again okay sum of sales amount over here I'm taking partition by if I take partition by English product name let's see what will happen as broad wise sales so the earlier one is total sales in the over I have not given any partition that means it will treat the complete result set as one partition and it will add the complete data but here in this query I am specifying particularly that uh, treat uh, each and every product name as a different partition that means it has to return the sales amount of all these guys the all product all purpose bike stands uh, as total as sales amount for this particular product all these rows and then once it up to here okay it has to sum all these values and display it as a separate column and for the next product it will treat as a new partition let me execute this so that you will get a better idea you see it is returning 39591 for all the rows up to 250 I guess I don't know how many rows are there with all purpose bike stands let me go with 249 I remember so yeah up to 249 it is giving the value 39591 what why because it is partitioning based on English product name so all these guys from here to top it will treat as one partition and it is getting the sum of these sales column up to here now let's see 159 right let me open the calculator 159 into how many rows 249 it is 39591 the same thing 
you are getting as part of the fraud sales column. And here 899, sorry 8.99 is returning 19688. That means there are that many number of rows, the sum of which will return this value for AWC logo cat. In the same way, if you go for another, so it, now now it will give you the total sales, but by taking the partitioning. After partitioning, it will give you the total sales. What is the advantage of having these two functions? I mean, why, why you need to know about these two? Can you go for a guess where you may need this? What is the real-time uh, scenarios where you may need this? Okay, I've given a couple of, uh, sorry, 10 seconds, but uh, no reply from you guys. So let me explain a real-time scenario where you may need these functions or need these scenarios. If you want to calculate percentage, so whenever you want to calculate the percentage, then this is the best option. This is the best function that you can go for. See, for example, if you want to calculate percentage of total sales, then this divided by this into 100. That is percentage. And if you want to calculate the percentage uh, based on a particular product, like all-purpose bike stand, if you want to calculate the percentage only for this, then this divided by this. Right? Now let's try to create a query which calculates the sales, overall sales and also um, sales product wise. So this is the query, I'm taking it. This is the sales amount, I know. This is the sales amount, what I'm going to get. Divided by, okay, I'll, call, I'll add a new column. So the first row, I'm having two columns. One is English product name and another one is sales amount. In the next one, I'm taking total sales as well as uh, sales product wise into one row and I'm pulling this from into the new one and join into the new one and order. Here I'm going to add one column which calculates the sales. Let's see sales amount. This will give you the sales amount divided by sum of sales over something. Or, or nothing. I call it as as sales percentage. Okay. Now let me execute this. Oops, I have missed a comma here. I have to add one comma. So let me execute this. You can see this is 159 divided by 29358677 point something. That's why it is negligible and it is not giving the value. Now let me try by calculating the percentage for this particular product. Let's see whether it gives any value or not. Instead of uh, nothing in the over, over keyword, I'm giving partition by English product name, which will get you, which will give you the sales, this guy 39591, that is equal to 159 divided by 39591. Let me name it as fraud percentage. And if I execute this, you can see it is giving 0 0.004. If I take this guy, control R, calculator, divided by this product sales, let's see, it is 0 0.004 and the same is returning. And the, if you go to the next product, for going to the next product, you have to go for, I mean, you have to clear 249 rows here, right? So after 249, let's see. AWC logo cap is also the same percentage, very much close. If you want to test that, I'm taking 8.99 divided by the sales amount that is 19,688. If I paste it, you can see it's minus 4 into e power minus 4. That means into 1,000 or 10,000. That will become 0 0.0004, which is correct. Whatever it is returning is correct. This is one advantage. As you can see, you can easily calculate the percentages. It's the easiest way to calculate the percentages instead of going for complex calculations or um, you can do it in different ways but I feel this is one of the best way. Now what I'm gonna do here is instead of the same product let me calculate the distinct. Right, that one will make sense right? Not distinct, uh, group by. I'm taking this English product name and adding a group by which will give me the distinct records, distinct English product names, and I can't leave the sales as this, uh, like this. I'm adding sum of sales amount 
here also I have to go for sum of sales amount. That means sum of sales amount divided by uh, sum of sales amount over nothing. That means it will give you the total percentage. Let me execute this. Uh, there is somewhere where we are not using the sum of uh, sales amount properly in this line and it is let me check this. so the problem here is you cannot uh, add group by when you are calculating this over percentage or oh, I mean over whenever you whenever you are using the keyword over or the sales sorry some function so now uh, this is about the dis, uh, different functions we have on ranking that is uh, entire rank dense rank uh, row number and yeah these are all the four and we also discussed about sum function what is the extensions we have for the sum function and how you can make use of it um, for calculating the percentages in the select statement now let's see a couple of new things that is a pivoting and unpivoting it is a different concept and you need to write lot hell of queries to explain the same so I've done a little bit of homework to prepare the queries which will save our time here or else for our writing the query it was taking a lot of time see all these queries written by me so it has taken a lot of time so that is why I have prepared some queries and I'm gonna use the same queries to explain you the data I explain you about the concepts called pivot and unpivot first let's say you have data like this let me take an excel to explain the same um, let's say I have, I have employee ID customer name and sales or quantity have these three columns if the data is like this and one two three one two three one two three this is the employee ID who has the who dealt with the customer Rupesh uh, Lokesh when I when I Rupesh Lokesh uh, Raj Ram Lokesh so these are all the employees who has dealt with the customer and the sales amount is 23 23 22 something some sales amount so converting the rows into columns is called as pivoting that means the employee ID will remain the same if you want to pivot based on customer okay here it will become Rupesh it will become Lokesh it will become Vinay and who else we have it will become Raj and Ram these are all the different names we have for uh, this particular column so this column this particular row data will be transformed into column data and now what are all the distinct employees you have one two three and for one employee ID one what is the sales by Rupesh you see the sales by Rupesh is two three two three and there is no other sales by Rupesh for employee ID one that is only these sales present for employee ID one and Rupesh combination so let's go for this will be 2323 and employee ID 1 and Lokesh this combination is not there so null employee ID 1 and Vinay this is the row and it is 23 this will become 23 Raj combination is not there so it will be null Ram combination is not there so it will be null now if I go for the second one employee ID 2 Rupesh yeah he has sales that is 23 employee ID 2 Lokesh he has sales that is 23 employee ID 2 when I no sales null employee ID 2 Raj no sales it is null employee ID 2 Ram who have sales you can see this uh, sorry this guy it will become 43 yeah a correction Raj is for one it is not null you can see he has uh, sales with the employee ID 1 that is 2 3 4 so let me place this 2 3 4 here and the third employee ID, this is when I has sales 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1 is the sales. And for Rupesh, there is no third employee used, so it will be null. For Lokesh, it is present. And it is 32 plus 2, it will become 34. And for Raj, there is nothing, so null. And for Ram, there is nothing, it will be null. So, this is how, this is called pivoting. 
and converting the rows, the complete rows into columns. Right? This concept is called pivoting in SQL Server. And uh, let's see how to apply the pivoting part here. I have prepared some queries. Let me copy the same, which will make our work easy instead of writing the queries again and again. Okay. Now, to demonstrate the same pivoting part, keep in mind what is meant by pivoting means converting the rows into columns is called as pivoting. And you have come across this part. Where you have come across this? Hope you still remember the concept uh, called matrix reports in SSRS. If you drag a row item, what will happen, sorry, column item or column group, what will happen? The row data will be converted into columns and will be displayed in columns. So if you take a matrix report, the rows and the columns, and if the matrix report is having a column information, then that is called pivoting. You are pivoting the data, you are, you are transforming the rows information into columns. So the same concept in SQL Server, how to implement. Let's demonstrate the same here. I'm creating a table with uh, one, two, three, four, five columns, order ID, order date, employee ID, customer ID, and quantity, and inserting some data into the table. So it should be A. Let me change this. This is not single course. I copied it from somewhere. So that's from WordPad, I guess. So it is changed to this guy. So let me change this one to single quotes. This is a string data, right? So correct me if I'm wrong somewhere, if I missed somewhere. Okay. I'm inserting uh, 10 records or so. Somewhere it is wrong still. Let me check where it is. For this guy, man. For the date. This is the problem if you copy from WordPad or somewhere. It will take the single quotes as a different character and it will not uh, execute properly. Okay, now let me execute this. So I'm inserting some records and you can see the data in the table. So you have orders, different order IDs and the date um, on which date they purchase this and who is the employee who dealt the customer and what is the customer name. It is A, B, C and so on. Uh, and what is the quantity they bought. Let's say 10, 12, 20, 40 and different quantities. Now, let's see how to do pivoting part. I'm not taking all the columns, why? Because order ID, order date, I, I'm not taking it. I'm taking employee ID and converting this customer ID into columns now. That is called pivoting of customer ID. Let me show you how to do that. First, I'm taking the group by, group by of data. And you can see I have only employee ID, customer uh, uh, ID and sum of sales amount. The pivoting can be done using by two ways. One is normal SQL query using subqueries and so on, SQL queries, case statements and so on. And another one is using pivot keyword. First, let me try with the normal SQL query. This is the key, the one what you are seeing or what the one what I'm highlighting here is the key for pivoting part. You see sum of case when customer ID is equal to A, then quantity, else don't give that and create it as a new column. So with this particular syntax, I prepared a column here. See, first it will be employee ID, the first column. The second column, it will take the sum of quantity only when it is A. Where all it is A? This is A. This is A. And uh, only two A's are there. Only when it is A, it will take the sum of quantity. And when it is B, it will take the sum of quantity and create a column called B and it will create a column called C and D and so on. Let me execute this and show you, you will get a clear picture. Okay, sorry, order employee is involved in the select statement. I have to add the group, I missed that. So if I execute this select statement, you can see the employee 1, 2, 3, I'm grouping the data. And for A, 
if there is no a for 1 and hence it is returning as null and there is 52 for 2 and 20 for 3. If I execute these two statements you will get clear picture. Let me ex ex execute these two statements so that you will get a clear picture of this. First it will take employee ID 1 and for this employee ID it will take A part this one and we will check whether there is any A customer uh, who was dealt by employee ID 1 there is no one so it is placed in null and customer 1 and B this guy is there so it is taking 20 from here and placing 20 and C 1 and C it is there it is 34 it is placing and D customer it is not dealt by any uh, by employee ID 1 employee with ID 1 so it is placing none. So this is the way in SQL Server. In T-SQL, you can use this way to convert the rows into columns. So first, the key is the employee ID and the group by. You are grouping by employee ID. So you are making the, this column into only distinct records. That is three distinct records you are having. One, two, and three. First, you will group all these three. And you are creating four columns that are the different values present in the customer ID. And first column, if it is A, then add it. If it is B, then add it. If it is C, then add it. If it is D, then add it. So the B, C, and D. So this is how the pivot using SQL Server works. And if you want to use um, the pivot keyword, you can also use pivot keyword, but the syntax is uh, pretty different. Let me explain you the syntax. This is the query which you can use for pivoting the data from uh, rows to columns or transforming the data from rows to columns. If you see the query, the key is, is here. This is the key. This guy returns the employee ID, customer ID and quantity and I am taking it as a D a name, a new name or an alias name and I am pivoting this data okay this is the formula you have to this is the syntax you have to follow this query this is one table pivot sum of quantity what you want to pivot you want to pivot based on quantity so you have to take sum of quantity for customer id in a comma b comma c comma d so it will check for these guys okay and it will place for these four newly created columns so whatever you provide in in statement only it will check for only those four you have given four right a b c d first it will check for a for the customer id and it will take the sum of quantity and it will place next to the employee id so this is how you can write a pivot statement to get the data uh, from transform the data from rows into the columns this is the syntax you can keep in mind and you, you can remove it and here too and you can see what will be the result. It is getting only the data for three. What what this guy says is this pivot guy, this pivot function says is make the sum of quantity for the different customers. Okay, this will be based on the employee ID. Only from here to here the query. And they are using a separate column. I mean, they are, uh, this is sub query. Sorry, this is a derived table. And this is the outer query, the main select statement, which is have which for here you are passing the alias column names. What are all the column names you are gonna provide? Let's see what will happen if you execute only this part. Oops, it is still pending, right? So up to here you can uh, go for. So this is not the one. You have to provide the complete select statement. And this is the syntax for pivot. If you have more columns, let's say you have a D and E, uh, sorry, D and E, you can provide the same here, D, comma, E. To execute this, if you have any data for these combinations, it will check and pull the data. So. Remember, this is how you can use the pivot keyword to pivot the data. That means you transform the data from one, uh, sorry, from rows to columns. And you can see 
instead of uh, the sub query here or instead of this uh, inner select statement I am using orders table directly the table which I have created so what will happen if I execute that uh, by going for a table you can see some odd results right you can see some odd data why because this guy will have all order ID and order date there will be so many records it will go for order ID if you go for order ID you will not get only three records the combination will be order ID 2 which will create the problem so you have to go for the columns which are required for pivoting the data and if you add if you include all the columns all the key columns then you will get some uh, nasty output so what you can do here is select star from I'm adding one more table on top of this as B and it will be a routine one again what you can do on this B group by employee ID and here what you have to do employee ID comma sum of A comma sum of B comma sum of C comma sum of D what this guy will do is this guy will add all this data group by employee ID and if you see the data now it will be aggregated to three column so this is how we instead of this query you better prefer by going for a select uh, I mean limited co columns in the um, derived table so this is how you can apply pivoting concept in SQL Server now I have taken the customer ID back you can see this customer ID is back and I'm pivoting based on employee now the same concept whatever I have applied for customer ID now I'm applying for employee wise pivoting employee wise you can see the customer ID ABCD is there and employee ID 1 who dealt with the customer is null customer with uh, employee ID 2 who dealt with the customer A is 52 and 20 and so on so this is not limited to any particular column you can apply this pivoting for any uh, column which has distinct records or uh, different records different duplicate records I can say now this is fine this is called pivoting and we discussed a little bit like what uh, how to achieve the pivoting using SQL query and how to achieve the pivoting using pivot keyword now what is uh, unpivot unpivot is converting this table to this the one what you are seeing here this guy to this guy is called unpivoting this guy to this guy is called pivoting so converting transforming from rows to columns is called pivoting and columns to rows is called unpivoting if I have uh, this kind of data and I can achieve this means then we call it as unpivoting let me uh, see how to implement the same in SQL Server so to fit the data I've created a table I don't need this primary key and all the stuff okay I have an employee ID I have a column A B C and D and each guy will have sales data let me create a table first table created and it's similar to this one right employee ID A B C and D I've created a similar table structure here and here I'm using the pivoting part to insert the data this is the pivot output right insert into table name and I'm using a select statement which is uh, having a pivot to insert the data into this particular table let me execute this and now let me see the data in this particular table select star from um, employee customer orders you can see all the three employee IDs and the customers in the columns. Now my requirement is unpivoting that is I have to transform these four columns A, B, C, D into a row and then add the sales amount. So this is not a straightforward one this is pretty tricky you have to go for see what I'm doing is I'm taking the employee customers table that is this customer table and I'm cross joining with values A, B, C and D and I'm aliasing it as customer ID 
okay what will happen is it will cross join that many number of times one will be cross joined with a b c d two will again what two will be join cross joined with a b c d three will be cross joined with a b c d and four will be cross joined with a b c d right so I have cross join with A, B, C, D and it is giving, you know about cross join, what it will do, it will do the cast hidden product and this guy has three records, this table has three records and this cross join values are four, four into three will become 12 records, you can see the same is coming here. Now everything is fine up to here, right, employee one, this guy is cross joining with A, B, C, D. And the same values here, 2 is cross joining with A, B, C, D and again third, fourth, everything is cross joining with A, B, C, D. Now the next step is, I have to make these guys as one column. These guys as one column instead of different. If you see, I am taking select employee ID, that means this column and customer ID, that is this column. I'm taking these two columns and quantity is a new column I'm taking and take the customer ID and check if it is A then get the A value. If it is B then get the B value. If it is C then get the C value. Sorry this one. And if it is D then get the D value for the employee ID 1. Similarly repeat for all the uh, four, all the three employees. So if you see, it comes like this. Employee ID 1, 1, 1, 1, A, B, C, D and A has no, B has 20, C has 34 and D has null. So something like this. This is how you can go for unpivoting, right? This is working fine. You can see it is unpivoting the data. This query, okay, will unpivot the data but the only problem is it is not a group. So I have to apply the group by statement here by using or by taking not null. Even this is fine. You can see employee ID 1, he has B, say B customer ID and quantity is 20. Employee ID 1, C customer, quantity is 34. Employee ID 2, A customer, 52. 2, B customer and 27. So the logic here is the logic that you have to get from this query is first the part is the cross signing how you are cross joining the data. He is cross joining with four values A, B, C, D. So if you provide values like this, it will take four values and it will cross join with the existing table. Okay. And once it is cross joined, then he is taking employee ID, customer ID as is and when it is, when he is checking a case statement based on the customer ID. If the customer ID is A, then take the value from A, that is A column. A column value. When it is B, then take the value from the B. When it is C, then take the value from the C. Let me show you the same here. He is taking employee ID, he is taking customer ID and if the customer ID is A, then you are asking it to take the value from A, that is null value. If the customer ID is B, then take the value from B. If the customer ID is C, then take the value from C. And customer ID is D, then take the value from D and place it as a new column that is quantity. Similarly, it will, it will repeat for everything. So if I, if I execute both the queries, you will get better idea. You can see one, I have, I need more space. Okay, this is fine. You can see one and customer ID A, what it has to take? It has to take null. One customer ID B, it has to take B. The case statement is written like that. 1, if it is C, then take the value C. You can see it has taken the same way. And I am giving the column name as quantity. So this is the quantity. First I have done this step and then I have filtered where all it is null. That's it. The unpivoting is done using SQL queries. Now, if you want to apply the same, uh, uh, execute the same using unpivot keyboard, this is how you can go for it. Select employee ID, customer ID and quantity from these three tables. This guy will return these three information. Okay, sorry. Unpivot, 
quantity for customer ID in ABCD. Earlier while pivoting it was sum of quantity, right? While pivoting the data it was sum of quantity. While unpivoting you, sh you, you are not allowed, allowed to sum, right? You, you are not going to get the aggregate data. You are going to get the free data that is the sales of a customer and employee level. So for all these four customers you are asking to unpivot the quantity and place it in the customer. You can see if I execute this, this guy returns the data in the desired format. So the syntax for unpivoting is remember the syntax that is important than um, any other. Select the columns employee ID, uh, customer ID and quantity from this table employee customer orders unpivot quantity. You will get quantity this quantity from here and this customer ID will be assigned to this customer ID. So what are all the customers you are taking A, B, C, D. So the same four will be assigned here. If I take five that is E it will show but as it is not having any sales it may not be shown. Invalid column name there is no such column available right. So it is throwing error. It will check for the column name with the name column with the name E and it will throw error. Right? If you see here, let me execute this. Select star from table name. This guy is not having a column E. That's why when I add a column E, it is throwing error. So it will take the employee ID from here and it will take the customer ID from here, the columns whatever we specified here, the values whatever we specified and the quantity from these values. Here this keyword plays a major role. This guy is unpivoting these four columns. Unpivoting these four columns and generating a column called quantity and quantity is getting assigned here. Right? This is the syntax for unpivot and this is how you can uh, transform the columns into rows. So if you have an idea of, see, it was a useful uh, feature in SQL Server. Earlier when there was no proper reporting tools like SSRS, Dundas or R scripting or so many things are there, uh, so many script, um, reporting tools are available now. Earlier they were uh, transforming the data from rows to columns in SQL Server. Nowadays they are pulling the data straight away like select star from table name and unpivoting the data in SSRS reports. So just a, a quick discussion on SSRS. I'm, I just want to take the data. Uh, let's say I'll take the data from this column. Okay, and the, sorry, from this table orders. Let me go to bits. I just want to demonstrate the unpivoting part. Uh, let me go to bits. It is in SQL Server. Oops, this is not the one. This is the one. And I'm taking a new SSRS solution to demonstrate the unpivot part so that you will get better idea. When you have such of, uh, easy options in reporting tools, people don't prefer to go for uh, the same complex queries in SQL Server. So I'm taking selected, I mean, I'm taking an SSRS project. And uh, Let me go for report right away. Add new item. And I'm taking report. Now, let me add the data source first. The data source, I'm pointing to AdventureWorks database where I've created the table. So this is the one and let me select the AdventureWorks DW, fine. The data source is created. Let, now let me select the data set. Uh, here I'm taking the query, select star from orders, click on OK. Now if you see you have all these four. What I'm doing here is I'm taking a simple matrix, taking employee ID as the row item and customer ID as uh, the columns and quantity as the value. So if I set it to write a line, if I, if I preview the report now, uh, I have not done anything, right, any coding part or anything, just I added it and you can see the pivoting part. 
the employee ID is here, the columns, the row values are transformed to column values. So this is this is what I was talking about. Pivoting is damn easy part in reporting tools nowadays compared to uh, pivoting in SQL Server. Now I'm taking one more data set here. I'm taking the another table unpivoted. Select star from customer names. Uh, sorry, employee customer orders. Now what I'm gonna do here is uh, let me take a matrix again. Employee ID I'm taking. No, for uh, pivoting you need to add some functionality, right? So it may not be site forward one in SQL Server, but unpivoting. Sorry, uh, unpivoting may is not site forward one, but pivoting is damn site forward one. Here you have to write a couple of uh, functions. You have to write a couple of functions here. That one, that's why it may take uh, extra steps than normal report designing. So this is about pivoting and unpivoting, which you can do even using SSRS part or any reporting tool. But few cases people people prefer to have the data or the transforming the data part in SQL Server, which is easy to maintain than maintaining in reporting tools. So that's it. Uh, we have discussed a lot about uh, different um, options available in SQL Server. Uh, I'll catch you with the transactions in next session. Thank you, guys.